Welcome back, everybody. The documentary The Age of Existence is a project which aims to highlight some of the complex issues around human and wildlife conflict on the continent. The crew also put a special focus on showing the markets, poaching and bush meat trade that the coronavirus has revealed as some of the bigger crises in conservation at the moment. James Suter co-directed the documentary and he joins us now via Skype to tell us more about the making of this picture. James, a very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Morning, Sampiwe. Thanks for having me. Now, The Edge of Existence, in your own words, James, how would you describe this documentary? It's a, it's a pretty hard-hitting documentary. Um, essentially, the team set out to document human wildlife conflict using the Serengeti ecosystem as a, a microcosm for what's happening around the world. So let's talk about the impact that uh, this uh, coronavirus pandemic has had thus far on the business of international wildlife trade. Yeah, I think it's been, uh, you know, incredibly difficult, especially for NGOs on the ground as well, trying to raise money um, and, to, and to work and, and be able to perform their jobs in terms of protecting wildlife in the wilderness areas that they protect. Um, and certainly the coronavirus has had a, a, a massive massive issue on uh, you know this entire industry and how has the human wildlife conflict given rise to to the COVID-19 pandemic itself and what are some of the possible solutions uh, to minimize further conflict and situations in the future James so with regards to human wildlife conflict I mean it's a multi-layered um, topic you know obviously you've got conflict between people and wildlife but underlying that there is a, a massive issue regards to you know people being desperate um, and subsistence poaching but they're also poaching on a much larger scale um, and if you know most people understand the Serengeti um, migration with regards to the number of species we're talking to moving from one area to another um, and this area is targeted very heavily with regards to the bushmeat trade so we've had um, we've had a number of thousands and thousands of animals actually killed by, by bush meat poachers on an annual basis. Um, and, you know, this meat is obviously exported all over the world. Um, and there's also been a link, obviously, to the coronavirus and, you know, other species like bats and pangolins, uh, where obviously their meat is consumed. Mm. And you say that most people don't actually understand the concept of a human-wildlife conflict, especially within the conservation space. Yeah, human wildlife conflict, I, I guess as a South African, you know, most of our national parks, with potentially dangerous animals, have fences around them, generally keeping, you know, people out and animals in. Um, but in a lot of places around the world, and obviously in Africa, we've got open systems, meaning people are living with wildlife on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, dangerous animals like lion, elephants, buffalo, animals that pose a, a real threat to people. Um, and at the same time, people obviously posing a massive threat to these wilderness areas, you know. Um, so there is massive, massive conflict um, throughout Africa. And obviously with the exponential growth in, you know, people's population, the, the human-wildlife conflict gets worse and worse as, as days go on um, and years go on. And at the same time, from a, a conservational point of view, the, ir the irony is, you know, when you're protecting these wilderness areas, you are finding more populations of animals and therefore the conflict increases as well. And I understand that it took you guys about three years to produce this in-depth uh, feature documentary. Take us through that process. So yeah, I mean, we wanted to tell a real story. We wanted it to be objective. So we wanted to, you know, talk to obviously protecting these, these wilderness areas, but at the same time, um, looking at the human element as well and how people have to survive with, with people, with, with wildlife on a, a daily basis. So the crew set out, it was initially a commission project um, and it became a passion project where, you know, we dedicated close to 130 days on the ground, um, you know, documenting what unfolded between wildlife people, the conservationists trying to protect, um, you know, the, the wildlife and engage with the community and essentially look at solutions to try and mitigate conflict, specifically in this particular area in the western part of the, the Serengeti. Now, the documentary is based on, uh, on, on Africa, specifically Tanzania. Why was this the perfect setting for this picture? You know, I think, you know, Tanzania was a good setting because you've got huge populations of people 
living with wildlife. Um, okay. We've got people who are having to, you know, plant their crops right on the border of these national parks. Uh, we've got elephants raiding crops. And we also, we also work very closely with an incredible organization um, called the um, Prometi Fund, who are responsible for protecting this area. So we, we had characters that we could talk to coming from a conservation point of view. We had characters that were directly affected from human wildlife conflict, i.e. farmers in these villages. And we wanted to engage with a, a government entity as well to see how private sector, the government, um, and people could work together to try and find these solutions to mitigate conflict. All right, James Suter, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we appreciate you guys, uh, you know, the fact that you're providing a platform of telling these conservation stories, because I suppose that it is an area that is largely overlooked uh, by our societies. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much. That is James Suter joining us on Skype this morning to talk about, uh, in a documentary he co-directed with Charlie Lukuk called The Edge of...